everyone's just a product of the things that have happened to them and everybody has a shot at unpacking that and kind of correcting it in late, in later life. Most people don't do that. Really? <laughs> For real? Really? <laughs> it was so good. Well, I, I, really? It was so good. It wasn't that stiff, was it? I loved everything about it. It's like, it's suddenly you're like this really? scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. You're like, really? You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Oh, don't forget to turn your um, phone on silent, please. Buddy, my phone's always on silent. My phone is so silent. Mine, I have a, mine's on Helen Keller. Are you gonna puke? What is? Let it out, guy. It's his hair. Oh, it's a Helen Kell hair. We did a sketch years and years ago. You're an artist. <laughs> Sorry, guy. Okay, I, come I had on. Had to set the tone. I had to let them know this was a comedy on. podcast, oh, not a okay. serious one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, there'll be no donkey oh, brain. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, we did a comedy sketch. Can I get one? Oh, okay. There's your gift. You can see My that. gift? You know what a gift is. I really don't, to be honest. I sound Remember like a... when you would go to the five and then you put a, a nickel in the thing and it would play like a horse <laughs> running around? Yeah. It would go, and you'd look in and you'd go, wow, that's a horse. Oh, you know, that's when you a were gift. a little boy. It's like that, but you text them to each other. But that's called a rotoscope. It's like a rotoscope, a three-second rotoscope that you text to one another. But it's called a GIF. And uh, the phonograph is an MP3 now. It is? These are riffs. I don't like old jokes. What yeah, happened? I know. What happened? I don't like this tone I'm taking with you. Yeah, and I And that's know. something someone your age would say. I don't like the tone. I, I don't saying. like yeah, the I doubled oh, wow. down. I doubled down. My dad used to work for the phone company, and he'd say that all the time. I don't, I don't like, like the tone. tone you're taking with Check me. Check your dial tone. Yeah. That, he'd keep it he in was, the family. You keep it in the family. You sure did. You're gonna like the sketch, though. I oh I was, yeah, tell me about was, your sketch. I was it's a sketch comedy. Yeah, short form okay. situational comedy. Yeah, and uh, I was very stoned when I thought of it, but I think it's still valid. It okay, was a phone that had three settings: ring, vibrate, and burn me. <laughs> and what burn me? Like it would heat up. So like what if you're at a concert and there's a lot of bass, you would still feel your phone. <laughs> It would, it would get really, really hot. In your pocket. So you'd have a hot pocket. And you'd Jesus, go, ah! dude. It's not real. It's just for comedy laughs. And yeah, then, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I took it too far. The one We ended up shooting that. But the one we didn't shoot, and this is just the stoniest idea ever. Yeah. It's a fun, another setting is it makes you vomit. That, see, that's when you Whoa. lose it. That's when you're almost like in absurd country. We're yeah. in... Harland Highway. Oh, yeah. Let me hit the theme music. Sorry. Thanks two, for reminding two. me. Are you Canadian? Yeah. Didn't know. Are you? No. You will be. We all will be. Uh-huh. Well, now that's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's completely right. You're on the Harland Highway podcast. I said, I said, I said. I said, he know what he's on. He on the Harland Highway podcast. And uh, here we go. Uh, my special guest today, Pete Holmes, is here. Everybody, how I can, do they call you Peter or just Pete? How did you, how did you get a band that would play two chords with drums behind it? Just <laughs> something you, fair use. Just something just I found. Da 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 two chords. Da da da. Where's it going? Da 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 da. Where's it going? Go. Oh, it's in four four. Da 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 da. Highland Highway Podcast. I think Highland Highway Podcast. Highland Highway Podcast. Now you play this. You're like Twisted Sister over there. Ooh, it's a Highland Highway Podcast. You know I'm from those puppet dog pals. Oh, it changed. Ooh. Right, right at the end, it right fucked the end, you over. A flourish. That's called a fuck you over um, theme song. Let, give me a second to Mark Ruffalo. Whoa, Incredible dude. Hulk, my jacket off. Oh. This just went viral. Whoa. This shit just went viral. Is that a gif? This is a gift. This is a gift, not a gift. Are you going to flash your hooters? I wish I could. If I had the courage to just press them together. You kind of went halfway. I saw you a little thought, bit no, of I belly. I untucked. I untucked. I know, but I thought you were going to. I thought I was going to. I don't steal bets. That's Burt Kreischer's. 
Well, he takes it right off. Oh, if I lift it up and just a little nippy tip? Like if you wanted to Mardi Gras my audience and flash them some milk uh, jugs. Here's a real rule, ladies. Okay. Get the beads first. Yeah. Don't, Don't flash, give it away. then go. <laughs> Don't give the milk jugs away. Don't. Jugs is the funniest name for, tit, for tits. <laughs> is, is that what you call them? No, I have never called. Let me see your jugs you in have the bedroom. It? Where oh, are you sweet. from? No, let me see those jugs. Mm. That's over. What about milk jugs? Let me, maybe reveal your milk jugs mm. to me. You ever have a girl with milk jugs so big there's a missing child thing on the side of them? You're truly one of the gifts of Canada. <laughs> but <laughs> Canada's given us a lot. Yeah. The NHL. Oh. Uh, the Blackberry phone, I just learned. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the show Nirvana, the band, the show. Oh. Uh, Matt Johnson in general. Um, and that joke. And you. Yeah. You're a gift. I'm a gift. Who's, I'm a Canadian gift. And we can make you into a gift. A gift. But who's like you? Who's like you? Jesus. Well, yeah, all the greats. Full of miracles. You're always walking on comedic water. And then you pick up that water. A lot of people don't know this. The water that Jesus turned into wine was what he walked on. It was the same water, which is why the wine is called Barefoot. Whoa. And I do a line of ketamine right on camera. Everyone's like, wow. Yeah. Do you think if Jesus came back today, if if he came back today, could he walk on bottled water? Or would that just be like a Three Stooges <laughs> sketch where he's just like rolling down? The that head? would be the next level. It'd yeah. be like Jesus only walks on Evian brand water right? or liquid death. Oh, wow. Liquid death and then three days later, liquid life. Liquid life, yeah. The Easter water. Bud life. Bud yeah. life. Wow. Hey, chief. He'd call Jesus chief in 2024. <sighs> hey, chief. Chief. Because he called him rabbi back then. You did? People don't know that. He was Jewish, right? People Jesus. Call him rabbi. It just means teacher. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't bring up a G's top without this cheese top. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a rabbi? Do you have a rabbi? Did you have a rabbi? Did you just say, do you I have did, a rabbi? Yeah, yeah. What did you think about that? Orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> I never had a rabbi, no. No? I've had rabbis on my podcast. Really? It's called Pete Highway. <laughs> you make the... Not, e not even Holmes Highway. <laughs> we went Pete, Pete Highway. Yeah, um, that's all you need. Jeez, I, rabbi, uh, yeah, they called him rabbi. Yeah. What was his name, your rabbi's name? Mine? Yeah. Uh, that did the podcast? Yeah. Rabbi Mordecai Finley, which is also my Netflix <sighs> password. It's also a motorcycle in Italy. Mordecai? The, the Mordecai Finley 500. It will <sighs> get you. And the helmet is just a little hard yarmulke. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just like a little <laughs> skull hardest. cap. Yeah. It's really just a coaster. Yeah. If you are going to crash, make sure you flip and land on the top of your head directly. Almost like a headstand. And then you'll spin. Yeah. Because like if dervish. you flip, that helmet ain't doing much. But if you can do a Cirque du Soleil wipeout and just no. be right on the tip, no. you're going to live. I like the yarmulkes that have the little hair clip in it. Oh, yeah. The no Luzica. What Are those for headbanger Jewish people? Those like, are for the active religious. But I can't imagine, like, you're is living. anyone, like, you, you're going to work, you're a banker, you work at a hotel. Does it have to be banker? Or a hotel, okay. or, or a Holiday Inn, or, or running Warner Brothers. Just say what or you're Warner thinking. Brothers, or the Zoo, or at Seven okay. Eleven. I, I can see you trying. Like, can you, is there anything you're doing that that's active that warrants a no. paperclip? Like, it's this, not like you're at an Iron Maiden concert and you got to keep the yarmulke on. You don't know a lot of Jews, man. They, really, they throw down Corvettes, huge in the Jewish community. So it's not a on. convertible Corvette. A convertible. Oh, I said Corvette. I meant convertible. Right, because a, a Corvette indoor, that's not going to yeah, flap. Yeah, that's yeah. not going to do the yarmulke no, flap. No, no, no. Uh, the Jewish community loves a good convertible. You know and, what I'd and love to see? they also consider Goy's highly unconvertible. <laughs> it's wow. hard to convert. Wow, dude. <laughs> power You just power dropped me real hard. <laughs> just power dropped you. Power dropped me silently no, in the night. Well, yeah. Still got Christmas on the dingles. You tender footed me. You I power dropped me. You. And you inkjet cartridged me right there, guy. I wow. felt it. We're low on science. Nice move. <laughs> nice play, Shakespeare. <laughs> but let me ask you this because now, now I'm picturing a Jewish guy in a convertible. We all are. He's flying along He's 85 miles an hour. Old school cell phone. Right? Does the wind flip? Yeah. The yarmulke up, and now the yarmulke becomes a dragonfly catcher. Yes, and it says, if you can read this, my yarmulkes come off. 
It's like if you can yeah, make this yeah. the bitch. Wow. Wow. I didn't make that up. I'm quoting. Yeah. I don't call yeah. bitches. Biatches. Even biatches is over. <sighs> it is. A lot of stuff I'm saying today is like feels like it's over. You can do it. I can There's do it. There's a concession. We that, go, if a friend of mine goes, what's up, biatches? I'd go, yeah. no. And they'd go, Harlan Williams says it. I go, he gets a pass. That's how he gets all that ass. The Harlan Williams pass. Are you offended by the word, the B word? Because I have four sisters, and yeah. I rarely have ever said it in my life because he, it's so commonplace, that word. You mean in the bad way? Like like when someone goes bitch or calls you a bitch. Or, yeah. Like I, if you could look through the history of my life, I've probably uttered that word three times. Really? Because every time I hear it. It's a bad. It's like I have four sisters and it's so yeah. insulting to me. Well, it really, de- context, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. Chappelle says it. You're probably not cringing every time. I am. You are. I am. I don't like the word. It's toxic yeah. to me. Like You know it, what I'm trying to bring back? This is going to sound like oh, a here we go. Up. Here we go. I think gang. twat is very funny. I love twat. That's what I'm saying. I w- I'm doing a movie with Judy Greer right now. I knew we were going to be friends because I, I jokingly called Is her she British? A- no. Oh, I'd say twat, wouldn't I? I say twat all the they time, the British. That's and why I was wondering. They love the hard C one, don't they? love they? The, C, the hard I C. I used twat in a sentence with Judy, and she laughed. She laughed. So is it... Tw- and I was like, instant friends. If you love twat and I love twat, we love twat. Say, say it. Twat. 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 You're a bell end. You know what that is? I don't know, but it sounds Bellin. like a meat sandwich. It's you're close. What is it, love? You, a, lo- a bell. Come on, darling. Picture what is a bell. It? It's it's the tip of your cock, isn't it? It's like a mushroom cap. It's like man. a there's your bell end. Oh, the part that if you put a little dinghy in it, you yeah. could ring it. Oh, now God. I'm picturing some sadistic oh. serial killer that's calling me oh. to supper. I'm si- I'm picturing the hunchback of Notre Dame fondling <laughs> your niblet. I was at lunch yesterday, and the waitress oh, I said, God. "Do you have uh, sparkling water?" And she said, we have Perrier. And I, I, I was this close. You know why, Harland? Not to shame her, which is why I didn't say anything. Well, if she's fat, you could have said, you've got dairy air. How about that? Are you going to puke again? <laughs> Dude, your air pukes. It's like, pump the air pukes, Ralph. I'm like a, I'm like a semi-truck. I have air brakes. I know. Someone I shouldn't laugh. You, it goes, you air puke. I air puke. Wow. I gave you a hard air puke. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I interrupted no, your Perrier those- story. Well, it's a bigger topic, isn't it? It is, yeah. Meaning I'm wrong a lot, and I really like when someone says you're wrong. Like, I need someone. Oh, really? I like it. You you don't mind that you're not insulted? No, because they're helping you cheat at life. But what about creatively? Like, let's say Mm. you do a script, or you're editing something, or and someone comes to you who's a creative guy and says, hey, you're wrong. About, like, a creative idea? Now are you okay with them? Kind of. Really? Of course. Interesting. Okay. Because you're now critiquing my dream. That would be like I told you a dream I had, and yeah. you go, it shouldn't have been a 12-foot frog. It should be a 12-foot lizard. And I'd be like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Because I'm having a dream, yeah. and you're telling me my dream is wrong. But if I'm saying Perrier, yeah. you know, my dad says espresso. I'm never going to tell him. Yeah. Wait. Espresso is not the right... You say espresso? I do, but I don't drink coffee. I've never had a coffee well, in my is, life. See, this is what I'm saying. Can we, without humiliation, just say it's espresso? Espresso? Es- espresso. There's no X? It's not the express train to coffee town. It's espresso. For real? Please make this the clip just to help people. What about the clip? Yeah. Not the clip, the, the twat. Clip. The tw- twat. Not the twat, the, the tw- twat. twat. Not the, the clip, twat, the, the twat. What about, I say bitch on stage. Oh, you're breaking my heart. You know guy. why? I had such an affinity for you, and now you're assaulting my four sisters. Well, if that's all it took for me to be kicked out of your heart, I didn't want to be in that cheap ass motel in the <laughs> first place. If all it took wow. was saying bitch, yeah. I was never comfortable on your sheets. The Hard Hotel. The Hard Hotel. Room 666. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, I say bitch because I'm yeah. so not a person that would say bitch. So I have a joke. Oh, what is it? Here it comes. Like that. morning radio. I love no, it. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to leave my body. The joke is about you either believe God created the universe or you believe nothing created the universe. Both are valid. It's yeah. fine. But I, I'm talking about the ask the nothing people what happens when you die? You go into nothing, right? Okay. And I go, "You mean you merge back with your creator?" Okay. Nothing created you. You die, you go into nothing. You right, merge right. with your creator. Then I go, "That's heaven, bitch." And I didn't mean to make you recoil. But the bitch there 
yeah. is, is a good bitch to me. Yeah. Because it's an attitude. I'm saying something, I'm kind of talking about, you know, God stuff. It's so yeah. shocking and so inappropriate and so strange. Yeah. And it's also so guileless. Like, you know I'm not calling you a bitch. I'm saying, like, you could say motherfucker, but that's too far. Yeah. That's heaven, motherfucker. Like, too much. Yeah. That's heaven, dummy. Now, that's too, it's too preschool, stupid. yeah. That's heaven, bitch, is, is the only way that joke could be told yeah. for, me. <clears throat> for me. What about, can I throw something out at you? And again, I don't, you said word? you don't mind is me. Is the C word? It's the T. Tits? But the British one. Twat. That's heaven, you twat. That's heaven, you twat. 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 I said a British. Oh, the king's good English, by the way. The king's good English. Oxford English. The goodly English of the king. The way the king said twat I'm was sorry. twat. Is the king's silver tongue licking my butthole right now? What in the world, mate? Ooh. It's quite chilly, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a crumpet left out on the window ledge, isn't it? Nice, toasty crumpet. Oh, oh get the preserves <laughs> on your crumpet. Are those preserves? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, are those preserves? Does anyone say that anymore? I preserves? Just, I just say jam, old boy. Jam. Who says preserves? Stop. What are we, floating away on a boat? That's something they'd say on the crown. They'd be like, stop it with the preserves. Just say jam. I'm, yeah. the, I'm your dad. What about jelly then? Can we say jelly around jelly's this bloody table well, or not? Jelly's for kids, man. Jelly's like fucking... Well, nothing wrong with staying youthful, is there? Is Pete there? Holmes. Until your teeth fall out and you've got the diabetes. Well, that's the words of a twat, isn't it? A right twat. A right twat minging. I got a good roast joke ready for if really? I ever... A heavier guy, he's working on his way to type oh. 3 diabetes. I just think that's Why? very you funny. You love diabetes. No, no. Is there a 4? Is there a type four? There's no type three. Is my point? Oh shit! I There's blew only that type one. one and two. So you go. <laughs> he's looking like he's searching for type three diabetes. I think it's just a funny joke wow. about someone who eats poorly. I fucked up your joke. You did I, not. I didn't know there was a. It sounds so real. We're in a canoe and we saw a fish. <laughs> That's all that happened. We saw a diabetic point three fish. Yeah, dude. What? What is diabetes? Dude. What? <laughs> Twa, I meant twat. I didn't Twa? mean dude. I can't I meant hear you. Twa. I can't hear you, dude. It's like, hey, twat. Imagine, Twa? do surfers say twat or is it always dude? Yo, what's up, twat? There are still guys like that. They say twat? Like, no, the classic surfer guy. I don't know if right. they say twat, but you'll still meet a guy down at Laguna Beach that's like, what's going on? Like he's been in the ocean right. for 30 years. Like yeah. no one's told him that's over. But he still says dude, right? Of course. But he's he, basically Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. Frozen in time. But now he's 50. Let's go get some fish tacos, dude. Yeah. Like, wow. Now, can you do that again, but throw on the English twat at the end instead of dude? As an English? No, American, oh. but then English twat. Let's go get some tacos, twat. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying, what? Yeah. What? That's why twat never caught on. Really? Why? It sounds too much like what? Now, oh, filthy yeah. Seinfeld, twat would have been huge. But now it sounds like you're saying, what? I'm trying to call you a twat. And you're like, what do you mean? Huh? Who, what, where, when, why, twat? <laughs> now, that's why we say pussy. <laughs> like it's filthy. Yeah. Pussy, everyone knows what you said. Dude, I think this could be a new thing. Where filthy you, Seinfeld. Where you just go twat. Jugs. <laughs> Milk jug. Milk jugs. Yeah. Is this... The image we want to think about when looking at the female breast, milk jugs. Is that right? Hooters, bring the owls out of the bedroom. <laughs> Who has had been having sex with a naked woman? There are jugs, and you're like, you know what I'm thinking about? Owls. I'm sorry. Is this Harry Potter? What's going on? Gryffindor. He has a stroke. <laughs> Gryffindor. No one notices. But you know what's funny? You said owls and jugs. Hooters are owls. Right, but these, if you look at a white woman in the dark, and there's just the right moon coming through the window, it and she's, like oh, it's like hooters. giant owl eyes. Like just well, owl. see, you must be part mouse, because you're well, on the lookout. that's what I do. I, I, <laughs> I get the teeth out, and I'm just like, like, come at me. Come at me, Mother Jugs and Speed. Whoever named Hooters Hooters yeah. was reincarnated from a mouse. And he was like, he got he yeah. got owl on the brain. That's payback. That's payback. Now he's 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 nuzzling him. Have you ever seen an owl? I've seen jugs. I've never. I've seen an owl. I was in a farmer's market recently, and someone just had an owl. Don't you kind of hate that guy? 
What is just walking around with a? This is we're talking about the same guy, snake uh, guy. Yeah, fucking ferret as a ferret or a rat. You know why I don't oh, like them? Why? It's too much like me. I go on stage and present my owl. It's my thoughts and my opinions. Oh. And when I see someone just, I just bought it. You, oh, I did all this personality development. Yeah. I could have just bought an owl and drawn a crowd. Yeah. I resent it. Yeah, I, I don't blame Earn you. Earn it. You can't just have a snake. Earn it. Right. And owls are overrated. Like they call them the wisest of all the birds and they only know one fucking word. Who? I mean, that ain't too smart. The journalist owl? What? Where? Right? When? A-E-I-O-U. The I Wheel of Fortune Owl. I don't like when animals can talk. I know. Parrots. You know AI is trying to figure it out. I'm like... Maybe, oh, yeah, I maybe, saw that. Maybe leave that alone. They're trying They're trying to figure out the patterns of whales and dolphins. Yeah. And AI is learning yeah. what they're they saying. They speak in different languages depending on who they're with and stuff. See, this is all drawing us closer to putting a mic up to a chicken. And it's like, please stop eating right. me. And we're like, oh, shit. Can you imagine you like they they figure out like a killer whale and he's saying I'd like to fuck Brad Pitt or something like I mean, it's just join the human race <laughs> Brad Pitt <laughs> <laughs> Wait it's like it's like when you're watching something in like Korean yeah. and they're speaking Korean and then they say Brad Pitt yeah because there's no way to say Brad Pitt Oh can I do uh, Okinawa No That's thanks Japan. I'm busy Oh because Korea is a different place. It I keep is. trying to cancel you for mistakes you're not making. <laughs> That's all right. I want it. I want it. Can I do um, <laughs> the British Oxford King's English twat guy? Yes. But in the um, Korean Japanese like B movie missing like lip sync off. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Ready? So you say something to me and then I'll call you like a, a But twat. I say it in English or? Yeah, just regular. Okay. You can't park there. Who the hell are you? Great fucking what? I don't think I got the English part. Just felt sound like a throat it's cancer. Kind of robot. Really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do it. Let's try okay, again. Okay, sorry. Got to be more British. Yeah. I loved every moment of it. I know. I could see it in your yeah, eyes. I was enjoying. It glazed much. over <laughs> like an English ham. I mean, if you cannot do the podcast with your eye, please. Uh, I've, have I done podcasts before? Let you tell yeah. me. I don't think you're doing it right, guy. I know how to go viral. That's not an eye mic. It's not. No. Oh. Although the sponge, it does, it now does that you've done that, good. it's a real sort of like an eye rest. Now then that you, it's like wow. the, the soft part of a cigarette. It sort of reminds me of being back in the womb a little bit. Your mom was a recording studio, wasn't she? Oh yeah, she had twelve tracks. I'm gonna go one weirder. You know when you do voiceover for yeah. puppy dog pals? Yeah. And you go in one of those warm rooms, and it's quiet, and there's yeah. no sound. So silent. It's like a womb. It is. It's it like feels padded nice. or it an feels asylum. Safe. I love it. Yeah. When I'm in one of those, I'm just like, me live here? Me live here? You Hulk? Why? When I took my jacket off. But here's the thing, bro. Don't, bro. With a twat. When we're talking... When we're doing this medium, this thing we call podcasting, <laughs> we're looking at each other intensely. There's no, there's no other object or thing to look at. There's yes. no other, and it's me and you. Yes. A lot of strenuous eye work. Stren. It's the second part. It's the mouth working hard. Flapper. And you've invented something where if I need to take a little break, I can just go. That this is, is so relaxing. There, there is a genius to it. Like, no one's ever done this. When life has you down. When your eyes are tired. <laughs> bend your head down. And rest your eyelid. I'm Mike. I'm Mike. I'm Mike. Right? We could get the guys that play the two chords. The but two there's really chords. something to this. is like it went from a microphone to an eye rest. It is an it, eye It's rest. like now no one will ever look at a microphone the same way again because of what you did here today, Michael Jackson. I've changed. I mean, Pete Holmes. Don't make me him. Well, I, I, it was a slip up. The I whole scandal was? <laughs> well, yeah. It was I, a big whoops-a-doodle. <laughs> dude, if I look at you and call you Michael Jackson by mistake, relax. I just thought that's who you were for a second. Momentary lapse 
like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, a momentary lapse of concentration, Wendy. Yeah, very good. No, thanks. I'm busy. He was... <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was asking you to have sex? I don't, I don't know, Michael. No, uh, thanks. I'm busy. <laughs> I mean, it, who, why is that cool? Hey, why is that cool? <laughs> what? I have a theory. Like, Denzel Washington's very quiet when he's in a movie. He talks like this. He's, he's low. How does Sounds he go? Like, he's like, is that you? That's you? That's you? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. You want, you want to eat a sandwich? I, that's that sounds, nice. That's not very good. No, it was good to me. I oh, really? It. I liked it. Oh, oh yeah. you, you big man. You big. Man. Yeah. I'm doing it too classic, guy. It's I'm, good. Not, I'm not that's sounding good. like him. It's good. Don't look. You told me to jump in if oh, you yeah. said you're doing oh, something yeah. wrong. You're oh, doing yeah. something right right oh, now, okay. Washington. That's you. That's you. For you to go from Michael Jackson to Denzel Washington in what 12 seconds? Right. No one's ever done it before. Bingo, Batman. Listen, what I'm saying is Denzel's quiet. Yeah. And the reason why quiet is cool is because we used to be in danger. Would be in like the jungle or something. Okay. So somebody like Denzel would be the alpha. He'd be like, we're going to go get those. We're going to kill those wolves. Right? And what's a dork? Hey, guys! They're loud. So why is it cool to be quiet? Because there's a part of us that in our cells remembers what it's like to be threatened by predators. So cool. Think of Richard Gere. Brad Pitt. Is Brad Pitt loud or quiet? He's quiet. He's sexy. He well, and killer sexy. whales love him. <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Brangelina. <laughs> they know Whoa. that. Wow. Star Magazine. But listen, the ocean. can I can I sort of uh, challenge what you just said? Your you whole, think loud is cool? Well, your whole riff about the primates and a tribe and struggling and, yeah. and hunting and You're gathering. You're giving away their location. If you're like, what's going on, guys? You just, right. people die because you did but that. But don't forget, hunting was a tribal thing way back then in the Paleozoic era. What part of what I said made you think I forgot that hunting was a tribal thing? Because you indicated that the leader would be, hey, there's a mammoth. Yeah. Let's go get the mammoth. That's right. But if you've got a group of, of Neanderthals surrounding a giant prehistoric elephant... The guy over there by the, the, the spruce tree isn't going to hear, hey, let's go. We got okay. it. So, so just, you need, just, just to be clear, you need a leader your strategy. who's loud enough we have to be the commanding and lead the group. We've surrounded them. You're thinking of Braveheart, like, let's go. <laughs> like, that's different. Well, if you scream, yeah. let's get the mammoth, he's going to run. Yeah, but your part of being hunting is you don't just stand there and an animal just. Hey, are you guys hunting me? Okay, I'll, I guess I'll just wait here then until you throw your sticks. Well, what's interesting... You're I would, talking about a charging, lumbering behemoth or behemoth. And, well, I'm just trying to... That's fair. But I also die. was saying if you're in your village and you're loud, then a puma might come eat you. So the quiet goes that way. I'll give you that when you're hunting, you might need to let out a battle cry. Bingo. Bango. No, thanks. I'm busy. Sorry, dear. But why is that cool? I'm going to have a cappuccino. <laughs> That's not cool. That's psychotic. No, it, but it became cool. All I want to do is bash your fucking brains in. The only thing I want to do, I just want to say it. Man likes to know who's paying for his drinks, Lloyd. Very good. I'm having a little problem with the old sperm bank upstairs, Lloyd. Very good. Well, I'm hoping for excellent, but that's two very goods. Well, that's interesting. Well, but still, it's how not excellent. close to excellent is the phrase "very good"? It's a little ways off. You think there's a distance? It's like, are you going Where's to Bakersfield superb? or are you going to Fresno? Mm. Stop in Bakersfield, you're halfway there, Patty Melt. And I don't mean that. Are you air puking again? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I gotta rest my eye. Hold on. You call me a Patty Melt? <laughs> well, which sounds like I at mean, some point it was a slur for Irish. Oh, in walks yeah. his two patty melts. Uh, yeah, the old patty about. melts came Ooh. walking in. They Ooh. were working the fields, them patty melts. <laughs> them that? bastard patty melts. But you are Irish. A half Irish. You're a, I mean, in this riff, you're a self-hating Irish. I wonder how the Irish say twat. Do they say twat or twat? Because they've Ireland, got that little... Ireland. Th Ireland. 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 I'm from Ireland. I'm from Ireland, and you I say, twat. I say twat. 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 There's a little bit of a hiccup in it. Going twat. somewhere... Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter. <laughs> Just kind of snuck out. Yeah. Yippee-ki-yay. 
You pick Kalele. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. He should have said bitch. See, that's when bitch was wrong. Motherfucker was right. Yippee Kaye, this is actually right. This is interesting. Okay. Die hard. Yeah. Yippee Kaye, bitch, is wrong. Because motherfucker is like, I'm low calling you up there a motherfucker. Bitch is I'm above you calling down, bitch. Okay. Bitch is mic drop. Motherfucker is like, I'm going to get you. I'm under your car. But you've Ooh. hit me, but I'm going to get you. I, I think this is true. I would take this to any fucking word studying person I and think- say that's what's happening. Bitch is like, I win, bitch, and it's fun. Motherfucker is like, ah. But what was the diehard lead in you said? Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. See, this is where I think you lost right he's out of a, the gate. He's in a low status position. He's cl- crawling around, no shoes. Words. I think it's yippee ki yay. No, it's yippee ki yay. In fact, it's not yippee ki yay. I I wish we had fifty thousand dollars to bet right now because I'd love. You're that confident. A cyber truck. Oh, I'd love to jizz in that metal truck. Mm. Wow. I'm in a Tetris game. Mm. Zero to 60 in three seconds. Okay. The Cybertruck is telling us what men think they need. It Bu- is? Bulletproof? Yeah, do you know the society we live in now? Defund the police, drive-bys, daily riots, mall lootings, carjackings. Have you, have you watched TikTok? And you think the problem is that your door is bullet permeable? I think it's a solution like, to keep you from getting, like, shot up. This is the male fantasy. You think you're going to buy it, and week one, you're going to go, get down in the bullets. And no, you're gonna no, like, the odd, I, I think you buy the odds of ever getting shot are 1.1.1%, but that day when you need it, thank God for that bullet foof tuck. Bullet what foof? A, bullet fruit. <laughs> a bowl of fruit. Wow. <laughs> Lord. I got a bullet fruit truck. You sounded like a speedball right there. <laughs> Here, let's do a helicopter. Oh, you do it like that. How do you do it? What if yeah, we do it together? You I'll can't be, do it together. You be the tail rotor, and no. I'll be the propeller. Mine is more subtle. It can't okay. compete with your flappy little child way. Well, mine's a mine's a black hawk. Mine's military. All right. What's my... yours? News chopper? Sounds yeah, like it. A... Channel 5? Air puke, swallow it, swallow that whore. Oh, I mean God. that bitch. I meant the bit. You son of a, you got me to say it. You do your little fancy KTLA five and I get news you to, chopper. I get you to break a vow you made to your sisters. Uh, I'll That's all up, it took. I'll be up here, in my Black Hawk. <sighs> Wait. It's very good. It's very good and it's fun to watch. I'm gonna blow your mind. Very good. And you gotta do the you gotta do the traffic report while I shoot you the fuck out of the air. Ready? So you do your little Mine's traffic in the distance. I know, That's but I difference. can do mine and watch. And now let me take over because he's really far. But you got to do your little traffic report over the, the 5 or the 101. I can't do both while I'm doing the sound. I'm not Reggie Watts. You could do I don't the, have a delay pedal. You could do the... Listen to this. Ready? Okay. <clears throat> I can't do it today. What is that, a Wookiee? Pretty good, right? Was that like a Geiger counter? God, I lost my gum. Oh, my God. I hope your teeth don't fall out. Eat shit. I'll what if go I to pissed? Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I'll go to Arby's. I thought you were just inviting me to Arby's. Really? That's a sponsor of my podcast. Can you watch your fucking mouth? Is it really? Arby's. Eat fresh <laughs> shit. Eat fresh <laughs> shit. My friend. Arby's. We got the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Arby's. We got the meats. You got the shits. <laughs> My friend John Roy, very funny comic, had a joke about... Well, I'll be the judge. He had a joke about Arby's. He was like, it's like eating a gray swim cap. Wow. (laughs) Are you you going gum hunting, boy? (laughs) You look like somebody going gum hunting over there. 
I don't like when you do that voice. What you chew? Double bubble, wriggly, juicy. You fruit. a hub? You one of those hubba bubba motherfuckers? Look how you chew the rainbow. You chew the grape roo. What you chewing these days, boy? You chew in that fruit stripe, and then the flavor dies. Oh, remember the fruit stripe? Everything about fruit stripe was right, except the experience of chewing it. What do you I mean? love that zebra. I love that pack. I love the way that it's loosely, it's like thin white yeah. paper that loosely holds yeah. clean, sparkly, magic striped gum. I just put it in. It says, "I'm gonna." You're like, "I'm gonna marry this gum," and then five seconds later, you're like, "This gum never loved me." Wow. Right. I used to think of it as zebra jerky because the stripes on it. I used to take big league chew and I'd roll my own candy cigarettes. Oh, was that the big gl- the big glob? It was like a, just a big chunk. If you of got gum. a real fresh one, it would be, you know, shredded. It was supposed to look like chewing tobacco. Oh, I remember. Yeah, it looked yeah, like yeah. it looked like spaghetti, like like yeah, spaghetti, yeah, 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 yeah. spaghetti squash. You know what it also looked like? Mm. If I can, and you're a movie guy. I know you love the cinema, Cinnabon. Oh, you like Cinnabon? Sorry. Have you ever eaten a Cinnabon while at the cinema? Wow. Because it really smells the place up and everyone slowly stops looking at the movie and slowly turns to you because of that addictive stink. You know? And you're just sitting there in the dark and you're afraid to bite because 300 eyes are just staring at you like a pack of wild coyotes hunting a baby fawn. And yeah, you're just all, like... We're one Cinnabon away from chaos. Right? You know what I think is funny about that? We're a lot. Everything you said. Okay. But we're in a cinema and I'm eating a Cinnabon. Okay, am I with you? You're not with me. Sorry. Sad. Okay. You look, you're just, but you're not even Harlan. Your name is Franklin. And you look and you say, and everyone can smell my Cinnabon. Right. And I eat it to get rid of it. What I think is funny in this situation, this is like a mushroom's thought, like your shirt. Oh, that's a UFO. It's still in the theater. I just put it in my stomach. It's still oh. there. Like when you go on an yeah. airplane and they go, you can't take that liquid on the plane. You're like, yes, I can. Yeah. And you drink it. You're still transporting it onto the plane. Yeah. It's just in. Now, now you're the bottle. And are we 70% liquid to begin with? I've heard 90. How the hell are we getting on planes? Well, you know what I was going to ask you? Because you, 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 Pete Holmes, feel, feel like resting my eye. <laughs> I'm gonna rest my eye. I have guy. a scene in a movie where yeah. you're gonna say something okay. to a cop. Let's say that I don't want you to say. Okay. And to stop you from saying it, I just keep making you do bits. Okay. You're like, well, the last person I saw him with was Pete. Hey, Harlan, yeah. what do you call a jellyfish? And you're like, yeah, and you, by the comedy code, you have to yes and me. Yeah. And that's how I get off. Wow. Okay. What's your question? So you're one of these guys. That when you're on stage, you will talk about anything. Like you, you, you're like fearless. You'll talk about your private life. You'll talk about like you don't you don't worry about talking about things. That's true. So I thought in my head maybe you could be Help a good me. therapist. Oh, and if you have just a minute here, maybe two three minutes, if I would like to test your chops, test your metal, see if you could do. Be my therapist. And Test my Cybertruck metal. Yeah. You got it. Just see, you know, I could be your patient. Okay. You could be my therapist. In squiggle and, vision. And just let's, I, right. I'd, I'd love what's a, your What's your problem? Uh, a lot of my issues, I think, stem from childhood trauma. Well, that's great. See, I'm not sure how much of this Arnold Palmer is serious and how much of it is a bit because the truth is, and no one wants to admit this, there's two truths no one wants to admit. One, we're all terrified to die. Two, but we're not talking about it. Two is everything, every issue you have does trace back to childhood. It does? I would say. Ooh. With a great regularity. But there's, a great, there's great hope in this. Why? Because once you start facing this thing that you don't want to face, a lot of your stuff makes sense. For example, you, let's say every time you're in a relationship, you blow it up. Then we look back at your childhood. You saw that, uh, let's say, your mom, if you got too close, it became dangerous. So you learned to push people away for your own safety. Yeah. Your, your, your inner world 
was like, that's life and death. So what's great about that is instead of me, I have friends like that, instead of me looking at those people and going like, these fucking idiots, they don't want to be happy, they have a fear of success, they can't be intimate, they can't share their lives, but you're pointing at them and judging them. Instead of doing that, you just go like, nobody's stupid, nobody's brilliant, everyone's just a product of the things that have happened to them and everybody has a shot at unpacking that and kind of correcting it in, late, in later life. Most people don't do that. Really? For real? Really? It was so good. <laughs> well, I, I, really? It was so good. It wasn't that stiff, was it? I loved everything about it. It's like, it suddenly you're like the really? s- scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. You're like, really? It wasn't the stiffness that I loved. That's the end. I like being silly with you, but I think that's true. No, that's what I'm asking. When you're looking at the patterns that you can't break, it's yeah. because something in your past taught you that that behavior kept you safe. It was actually brilliant. So if you have an emotionally invasive mother and, yeah. and you're in that situation and you learn to withdraw because you need to get out into the world and be your own person. So you start seeing love as something dangerous. The problem happens is later in life, you have the same survival mechanism, but it's no longer serving you. This is what therapy is, is going like, you're not seven years old anymore. That's most of it. Did you do therapy? I did a lot of therapy. Did it, was it, did it work? Well, I think it worked to the degree that it worked, but it worked in the sense that I don't do it anymore. And we both agreed that it was over. I thought that was nice. But how do you find the stopping point when for you therapy? Jizz. Excuse you? What was that last part? I missed that. When, when you, when you jizz, you mean physical therapy, like sex therapy? <laughs> oh. Oh. I'll tell you what. Here's the true answer. You know you're done. What? When the therapist has properly installed a different thought system in your mind, just a, not not taking over the whole thing, but they put their mind in your mind adequately, so you have another reference. Meaning you no longer need the person, but you can kind of hear their voice. This is true of any teacher, mentor, friend. But do you trust in them taking something so intimate and personal and injecting their perception well, you onto you and then it's over I'm with you. when they have their when you have their perception? Is That's that a why, transference of who they are? That's why a good doctor isn't transferring their personality. They're transferring to you a set of tools and techniques that they've hopefully studied and have been tested and learned from others. But here's the good news. Okay. If you're cautious, and that's great, you get to sniff it out. If you're like, this person's not right, they're fucking nuts just like me, you leave. But if you find someone whose operating system vibes with yours, meaning my therapist's voice, Dr. Gary Penn, he would always say, who cares? That was his voice. I'd tell him something I was ashamed of, and he'd go, who cares? You're not hurting anybody. Who cares? That was it? Because like, it, we're talking about like shame or guilt, yeah. these things. And he's like, who cares? It's totally normal. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. He would say bitch. He would you go, said like, Pen, Dr. Penn? Penn, Dr. Gary Penn. I was like, Sean Penn, right? What you're doing. <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Um, he, Dr. Gary Penn would say something. Yeah. He's like, life is like this. He's like, let's say I have a quirk that I'm more comfortable feeling in control of the universe by putting my coffee right in line with this table. A lot okay. of people have little quirks like that. Yeah, yeah. Stand-ups have that. I like taking the mic out, putting it there, all that sort of stuff. That can be true, but we have to like work at going like, this is also okay. You know what I mean? Even though this is true. He always said this. He goes, paranoid people are correct. Like there is a lot to be afraid of, but he goes, you can't be its bitch. You, and he would say that because that's how we like to talk. Uh. He goes, it's true you could have an aneurysm at any time. It's true there could be an earthquake, right, as we're talking. It's true. The, the, the secret of life, one of the secrets of life, like there was an earthquake up where I live, um, and we went to a play later that day, a child. After play. the earthquake. Yeah, there was an earthquake. It was and, a small one. And then a child's play. We felt it, so it was scary. Okay, not necessarily the best combo to spend no, an afternoon. I agree. but. But this, there's something beautiful here, Harlan. Okay. We're here on the Harlan Highway. Let's roll the windows down. Let's get that yarmulke up. Wouldn't it be something if it was a children's play for the children with Parkinson's? Do children get Parkinson's? Well, if they're in, doing a play during an earthquake, it might look like give that. that perception. I acknowledge. What was the name of the play? Alabama Shakes. Alabama Shakes? No, it was Shrek Jr. Same thing. 
I didn't swallow that. Don't say it. My point is. But can I just, before you make your point. I'm almost done. Okay, point, point. Let's say the earthquake was at 9 a.m. Yeah. The play was at like 3 p.m. Okay. Val and I, my wife, are like, are we going to go to this thing? We're like, yeah, I think it's over. Let's go. We go to the play. We're watching Shrek Jr. It's children putting on the story of Shrek. Every once in a while, there's an aftershock, and the lights all shake. And the, and people on stage are like, <laughs> and then they keep doing the play. I think that's a pretty good metaphor for what's going on here. Well, I think how I would sum it up is that when your daughter or son turns, you know, 27 or 28, and they're sitting there with their therapist going, my parents made me do a play during a life-threatening earthquake. So I think the cycle just keeps going around and around. I like that. Two things. My daughter wasn't in the play. Well, who was Shrek? <laughs> Whoa, say it. Don't barf it, bro. I don't know how you meant it, but there were nine funny ways to take it, and I took it all nine ways. Yeah, <laughs> then who was Shrek? It's so funny. What I'm saying is, there's this, there's something beautiful and uniquely human about going like, this is temporary. This is flowing through our fingers. We can't stop it. Yeah. You can build a bunker. You can get all the food you want. You can like people are afraid to fly. Plane could crash. I'm like, yeah, but if you don't fly, you're still in this airplane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't get out of an airplane. You're either in your body airplane or you're in an airplane airplane. But there's no getting off the airplane. Right. So then you start looking at the risk of not doing things. It's like temporary. Let's put on a play. There's an earthquake. Let's put on a play. By the way, it was safe. Well, the I people that were there weren't like exceptional people. It was ours. There were a couple little aftershocks. It was on our mind. You wouldn't have done it, I'm, I'm gathering. Well, child, earthquake, titanic plate shifting. So where would where should we have gone? falling. Where should we have gone? Well, maybe under the bed. Ask her to maybe do the lines from Shrek under the bed. Again, she wasn't in the play. Two, that, that sounds like this to me, putting the glass there. I go, okay, there was an earthquake at 9 a.m. Let's spend the rest of the day under the bed. Well, if you're doing a play... Like, you might want to do cats under the bed if there's a 7.3. You might want to do a Phantom of the Opera under like the a, bed if like there's a, a 5.0. It was like a 4. Even a 4, I'd probably do Les Mis. <laughs> on, well, if you're going to laugh, maybe this isn't the podcast for me. But yet it's my podcast, so. You're in a real sticky pickle. Holy clam bake. Holy clam bake, Dr. Dan. <laughs> Dr. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> But I've wait. never had someone do it to me, and it felt right? good. Right, it looks good. It felt good. You're passing off a lot of habits to me. The eye rest, the uh, the puke bubble. Puke bubble. But is this compulsive disorder, com what's that thing from OCD. as good as it gets, where OCD. we're going back to Jack Nicholson again, where I you make me want to be a better man? Yeah. Is that... Is that what that is, where he couldn't step over cracks and he had, yeah. to, he had to place his stuff everywhere? Is that, is that different than what, what you're saying? I can't diagnose that because once things cross into a disorder, I think we're looking at a different thing. I'm talking about like every day mm -hmm. off the shelf. Most of us have some things that make us feel more comfortable. And, and it's nice to kind of work the muscle of allowing something that is uncomfortable to you. Got it. If it's benign. But if, you know, if somebody like Jack Nicholson in that movie, I think that we've gotten to the point where like the feeling of eating with a restaurant silverware makes you feel so fundamentally unsafe. You can't start with like, just use the silverware. You know yeah. what I mean? You have to trace it back to why do you feel that way? And it goes back to your childhood. By the way, that sounded a lot like your therapist as a waiter. Just use the silverware. Just use it. Well, he might say that. Yeah. He was perfect for me. Because he was now, like, he was just like, you do it. At what point though, <laughs> like it, you've got to have a lot of trust. Was it invasive to... Have a therapist, or was it easy to open up and, and let a therapist in? Because you're letting a complete stranger, even though there's a degree on the wall, you don't know this person. You're, you're See, letting is, them into your deepest inner thoughts and monologues. Is, yeah. is, was that hard to do? Did you have no. to have several sessions to really sort of... Well, you, you know, you get a vibe. You know, yeah. sometimes you have... A, I've had two different therapists. The first one was great, but I really vibed with Dr. Gary Penn. That was years later. So, you know... 
it's not just trusting the therapist, it's trusting yourself. It's like, I know that if this feels wrong or, or doesn't, yeah. you know what I'm saying is like, I remember a friend of mine told me that he would go to therapy, but he couldn't get past the fact that the therapist was only talking to him because he was paying him. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's what we're talking about, being, meaning paranoia is rational. It's Got rational. It, yeah. But we could get caught up in that line of logic with anything. You could be in a car accident. You could say to the paramedic, you're only taking me to the hospital because I'm paying you. It's like, your job, like, yeah. So what are we doing? The mind gets really creative mm, when yeah. it wants to block and stop. So there is a certain degree of courage. But as a performer, I, I found it very liberating to be able to talk to a therapist and just be like, what it is is like, I was just watching a talk on this. There's, there's your true self, what you really want. Kids are very good at like ex expressing their true self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pure. Purity. Totally pure. Yeah. I want a cookie. You know, yeah. That's good. And we have that. And then later we develop a false self. The false self is, I'm not talking in spiritual terms because we could do that as yeah. well. I'm just talking in purely psychological terms. My false self would be <laughs> hilarious. I'm at a party and someone tells me a joke that I don't like. My false self, you being phony, but being serviceably phony, meaning I might be like, oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Or whatever. Or like, you should come over to our house. We have a bean baking. And I'll be like, that sounds great. That's my false fake. self. Fake. Totally fake. But we need that. A good percentage of your day is false self. And reliably and it, as it should be. We can't go around just saying exactly what we want all the time. Yeah. It's just not how a society functions. Yeah. But the, the, the way to stay healthy is to let your true self run amok every once in a while. So stand-ups, obviously, I do that as my... In that's a release for you to do that to a degree? Of course. But that's what I was saying. That's I what Bill Burr's whole thing is. It's like, here's yeah, my true that's self. True. Here's my true self. Yeah. That's why I love Bill. I know he's not giving us all of himself. Yeah. He's, he's not balanced. He's not trying to be balanced. He's just showing you, like, if I'm being real, deep down, I think this. And it's so funny because it's yeah. familiar. But that's also, that's what good therapy is. Yeah. It's very hard to even have a friend or a partner that you can say, like, I'm angry at my mother, or I'm angry at my dad, or I'm jealous of my brother, or whatever it is. So you bring in this person who can be a mirror and yeah. can show you and demonstrate to you, a good one, that you're okay. In fact, therapy can be summarized most of the time with, like, I hear you, you're okay. Oh, but I want to, I hear you, you're okay. Yeah. But... Something about, in the same way that like a, a friar's frock or a priest collar or a Buddhist robe, these symbols, Carl Jung says, symbols transform us, not ideas. So going to a therapist who yeah. you then project onto, they should be as blank a slate as possible. You might project onto them your father or a trusted teacher. There's all this projection going on, but you use that symbol yeah. to say, I believe that the... In the same way that someone going to a comedy show goes, this is comedy, and then it's funnier. Yeah. The same way you go, this is therapy. He's a therapist. It is now more therapeutic. Isn't that weird? Yeah. But that's yeah. how we are. Why is a dinner more fun with white tablecloths and candles? It's the same fucking food. Yeah. You eat it on an airplane, it sucks. Yeah. Because we're symbolic creatures, and we, and we should identify this and lean into it and exploit it, use it to our advantage. Interesting. And when it was over, yeah, it, 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 I guess there's no real sense of finality. But you said something inside you says it's it's time, it's run its course. I've found some resolution. Yeah, you walk up, but I'm guessing whatever the issues were, whatever the reason you went, it's still always sort of present. But maybe you have more of a handle on it, or yeah. uh, you have a rationality for it. For sure. I huh. think that's a really nice way to put it. And and I just noticed that I, and I do this with a lot of people that I love, books that I read, they become avatars in my mind. And I go, oh, I'm feeling this way. And I'll think of something I read. But it's more fun to picture the person like floating, like Obi-Wan in your mind. Yeah. And you hear what they would say. And Dr. Gary Penn is one of those people. But he's on a council. He's on a board. I got a boardroom up there. There's... 15 people, you know. What like do you mean? My, what we're talking about is cultivating a thought system. Like, like, and so I consult with all of, this is a metaphor, all of the things that I've read, all of the people that I admire. Let's take Mr. Rogers is one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. you're like, what would Mr. Rogers do is a helpful 
strategy. Got it. What would the Dalai Lama do? What, what would, would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? What, well, that's a classic. What would Dr. Gary Penn do? He's just one of the few non-saints that's up there. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Okay. But we're all doing this. Yeah. Sometimes when you're stoned, you, you get more of a, a glimpse at what your mind is doing. And it's consulting with all of these different reference points. That's why I think you have, we have to be very careful about what we're consuming. Not to be paranoid, but like I see it on people's skin, the people that are, are watching 12 hours of news a day. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And how can you, or, or if they're on social 12 hours You a can day. sense that on you, people? I, I, I won't flatter myself and say I can sense it, but like when they start telling me how they're feeling, I'm like, well, why would you feel any other way? You've been living on the knife's edge of chaos. Yeah. You've been looking in a telescope into a supernova of absolute uncontrollable chaos. Yeah, yeah. No wonder you feel like Bo is afraid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's how you should feel. Yeah, yeah. But what's strange is you have other voices. There yeah. were people that were living in more tumultuous times differently that found equanimity and peace. And I think those voices are very hard to translate into an Instagram slide. Equanimity. Equanimity. I know what that word means, by the way, but they don't. These, These dum-dums? The people watching. If you could just... Equanimity? Yes, for them, not for me. If you could just tell the folks what, what that word God, means. you're such a gift. You really are. Equanimity just means all-encompassing peace, a sensation of spacious, yeah. peaceful right. tranquility. There you go, gang. Can I present something to you? <laughs> Why didn't we go to grade school together? I would have loved your weird sticky we hand. We would have had fun. We would have had a lot of fun. I've been wanting to present this to someone, and I think you're the right person. Because, you know, we're kind of talking about people and life, and I just want to get your interpretation of this. Can I present something yeah, yeah, to yeah. you? Are you open-minded to it? Oh, sure. I just want to hear your thoughts. Hang on. On this leaf, I thee wed. Well, let's not go there. It's a leaf. What it? What do you see there? There's three caterpillars, and, and, they're, and they're eating. Uh, they're eating the leaf, and then there's also little seeds. Little e those are caterpillar eggs. Caterpillar eggs, even better. So this is like a happy little family doing great. Right. They got food, and then. Those turn into this, yeah, which is a caterpillar, a big caterpillar, which in turn becomes this, a cocoon, yeah, which in turn becomes this, yeah, there he is. What do you think? Well, this is beautiful. Go ahead. Please this, elaborate. This guy, going into this guy, thought he was dying. There's nothing in his nervous system that when he's cocooning himself, knows rationally, this is okay. I, I'm not, he thinks he's dying. He's going into a coffin. He's building a coffin for himself. What? The, what? The, it, the instinct level, the trust... The faith that he's like, I'm going to do what I feel I need to do. Cocoon himself. Even though it seems like it's the end of my life. This is the whole thing. This is a metaphor? For all of us, of course. But the idea that rebirth feels like death or that change feels like death, it feels like closing in a mausoleum, a coffin. So just to recap, this represents... Well, that's just the beginning. That's your parents, I suppose. And this, this monarch the, caterpillar represents... This is the first half of life. And I don't mean that necessarily chronologically. Everybody can enter the second half of life at any point. Or a lot never do. Yeah. And this... That's called dying before you die. And this, that's called a rebirth, or resurrection, or lib liberation. Fucking dope, man. This is just an experiment, because we live in a world where I think we're starting to merge technology with 
organic material. Sure. Would you indulge them, not me, with your wonderful news chopper helicopter sounds? I agree yours is better. But not for this. Oh. Oh, for him it's like You farted. And then he hits a windshield. That's life. I think that was the last part you forgot. That he gets hit by a windshield? Yeah, we all get smacked by a fucking Ford Neon or a Prius. <laughs> just splattered. <laughs> and then we got to start again. Well, right. By the way, do you ever camp? And have you ever wiped your bottom with a leaf covered with caterpillar eggs? And then you go to the movies the next week. And your ass cheeks separate, <laughs> and worms are coming out. Yes, I think you know the answer is yes. I have. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go to therapy? No, I'm not going to therapy, but the reason I brought it up is because you're one of these guys on stage... <laughs> You, you're one of these guys that can jump to stuff that's, it feels a lot, it feels very personal when I watch you. Yeah. Your topics about your life, your marriage, your relationship, your, yeah. and it, it's, it's interesting because it, I think that takes courage to kind of open up into that real life stuff. I find more, people more are in a bit of more of a fantasy realm, but yeah. you, you find a way into, <laughs> extracting stories from very real moments yeah. in, in your in your world in your life in your relationship so i i like that i admire that oh, I yeah i think that. it's it's hard to do it's something i don't think i can do or if i i don't even know if i've ever even tried yeah because it's well, it's not i wouldn't want you to change and do it because i love what you do you yeah I mean? but it feels right i think what people like in general is people being who they are. Yeah. And when you're watching Anthony Jesselnik, you're like, I, I believe this. I believe yeah. that he can be a little devil. And yeah, then he yeah, goes yeah. up and he does this little devil thing. And yeah, yeah. But it feels sincere as opposed to somebody who is just drawn to that, but it's not really who they are inside. And I'm not saying Anthony's a devil. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. He but he really is. That he really he is. is a wicked yeah. little devil. Oh, yeah. Wicked little devil. Call, call. Anthony Jesson, the great wicked little devil. Beautiful devil. Oh, beautiful devil. Beautiful devil. Beelzebub. <laughs> I love all the devils. I shouldn't be saying. Oh. I shouldn't be saying this. Lucifer is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Beautiful friend. Came to Via Lago. <laughs> Got him the eggs. Brought him eggs. They were deviled eggs. Beautiful deviled <laughs> eggs. Oh, is that? That's Trump. I thought you were doing wow. Winston Churchill. The only thing to fear is fear itself. <laughs> yeah. What an opportunity. A lot of people confuse those people. And some people confuse this next thing I'd like to present to you. But if you're open-minded, I'd love to present. Let's clear the butterfly off the table. As the expression goes. And can I present something else to you? Because that was nice. That I felt like we... We went there. Papa. See you later, pops. I'm going to do a voice match. I'm going to scab your show. Bingo. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's leaf number one with some, with some eggs on it. Oh, number two is a caterpillar again. Green caterpillar this time. Number three is the pupa. The pupa, okay. Also called the cocoon. Another kind of cocoon. And then lastly, yeah, freaky deaky. That's so freaky deaky. Looks like an orchid, doesn't it? But what is it? I don't know. Is it a moth or is it a, yeah, a moth? Yeah. So similar. So similar. The same yeah. life cycle. Yeah. But yet, what does Pete Holmes say about the difference between a butterfly and a moth? They're so close, but yet... Yeah, so close. Wow, this is making me think of something. There's another comparison. Yeah, human beings, like locusts, right? Locusts, similar evolution, or let's put it this way, flies. Okay. Right? Fly, very similar birth, life, death thing as a bumblebee. We like bees. 
because they pollinate flowers and fruit. And they have very similar tastes to us. They like sweet things. They like sweet smelling things. They make sweet smelling things. So we like bees, but we don't like flies. And then flies pollinate flowers that we don't like the smell of. Is that true? I believe so. And there's trash and fucking they eat shit. So there are these like uh, evolutionary evolutionary biases. You know what I mean? They just make sweet things. Similarly, this just doesn't look as pretty. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, that's, it's a subjective thing, a moth and a bar. This is why I thought I'd ask you. I think most people prefer the psychedelic beautiful pattern of a monarch butterfly. And, and when you see a moth, most people see something that isn't as attuned to what we like. Meaning, it's, it's absurd, but we think that's beautiful. I like beautiful things. I'm like a beautiful thing. I'm like a butterfly. I'm not like a moth. But can I present you with a little challenge? Yes, please. When you go home today... I'm going to ask you to do this as a little piece of homework. Think of me as your therapist now. Home, homes work? Homes work. Go on Google and Google moths. Are they beautiful? I think most people think them as the dull bastard children to the butterfly. But, but when you when you look at the plethora of moths, I think there's only like 80 or 200 species of butterfly, but there's like 3,000 species of oh, moth. Wow. And the beauty in the lowly moth. Well, you, I'd like you to look and just judge for yourself. I'm not going to tell you, but no, maybe you, you learned something here from therapist Harlan today. Maybe I was just going to say you could do a whole podcast about this, and maybe that's what we're doing because I th- meaning is so interesting. And butterflies being the chosen symbol that made right. every child's book. It could have been moth. Even the word moth is bad marketing. Like right. a, a John Ham, Don Draper could come in and be like, get rid of moth. We're done with moth. Yeah. It's the berry fly or something, you know, something yeah. beautiful. Something yeah. I, I can't do it. But I'm just saying, like, they have bad PR. The tangerine fly. You know, it has a, it's I get what you it, it, It's fruitful. It, it, yeah. yeah, alive. It's got effervescence. Yes, yes, yes. Versus moth. Language? It's like someone named Larry. I agree. Versus and Fitzpatrick. Also, Godzilla didn't help. Mothra? Yeah. And they eat our sweaters. We don't like that. Can you imagine how many sweaters Mothra has to eat just to have a lunch? Like, he probably yeah. has to go and peel the roof off a raw Burlington. dress for less and just munch down. But it, I think that might be it, too. Going back to, like, human beings are unique in that we can choose to be a locust or we can choose to be mm. a bumblebee. We can help and pollinate or we can devour and destroy I think part of the problems might be that moths eat our sweaters. So there's a, there's no yeah. there's no butterfly balls to get right. rid of butterflies. You never see a butterfly a butter a butterfly chowing down on a turtleneck. So it's very hard to come back from a nuisance. A bee will sting you, but it's not a nuisance unless you're apoplectic and then you die. True. Some people are allergic to bee stings. I am allergic to bee stings. I'd rather have this fly on my, uh, you know, happy face T-shirt and eat it than end up in ER with a bee sting from one of those honey-sucking whores. Honey and I don't mean that in a bad way. Horse? No, they're good. So this is a very interesting experiment. Can you give me just a second? Sure. I know it's a bit, but I really like it. Well, it was a bit exhausting. This was heavy. I thought it would just be so... You know, I didn't know where it would go, but the, you sort of... The For meta- those of you listening and not watching, he means the moth, not the episode. <laughs> yeah. This was heavy. Yeah. I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't. We've gone all over Silly Town. Are you ready for the final segment, my friend? And by the way, folks, before we get into the Pete Holmes, actor, comedian, uh, writer. (laughs) Midpoint intro. TV. Netflix special out now called I Am Not For Everyone. Please watch that. And he has his own podcast, too. Which Harlan was on and was wonderful. You know what? I owe you a big apology. I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but it's always been in the back of my head. and I'm going to bring it out now. Can I do some therapy? Yeah. So years ago, I'd never done anyone else's podcast. My yeah. buddy Jeff Fox says, you know, you should go do other people's podcasts. So this is back in oh, this 15 is... years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Pete Holmes has his podcast called You Made It Weird. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll do it. I'd never done one. Been on someone else's. I go. I had the best time. <laughs> it was like, it really was. It was like such a, I left there going, 
I was really like I really enjoyed our conversations and yeah. and your presentation. And I had the Harlan Highway at the time. They're both audio podcasts. Yeah. And you might not even be aware of this, but I'm I'm confessing. Um, I came home and I just thought, oh, they're goofy podcasts. Like we just we put them out. Like they're they're on the like they weren't a big deal back then. Yeah. And so in my head, I went, oh, I'm going to help Pete spread the word on his podcast. And I loved doing it so much that I cut it up and I I put <laughs> ten minutes of your podcast on about four of mine, and then I plugged it. I go, go listen to Pete's thing. And in the back of my head, I guess I should have talked to you this a long time. I thought, <laughs> I wonder if I, if I pissed off. Like, it wasn't until years later when I saw podcasts were a real thing. And I went, oh, people take this shit seriously. I was always doing mine just for fun. Funsies. And so I don't even know if you know this or not, but I put clips of yours on mine to promote yours and so people could hear the conversation because i loved it so much so i hope if back then it offended you or anything oh or, no i don't even know if you knew about it but I I'm, didn't I'm confessing know. you I, if it, that's the worst thing that can be confessed to me may my whole day go that way but <laughs> it was it was really just a tribute to how much fun i had and how great your podcast was for me so i think that's fair game i'm for letting sure. my therapy out on you I don't think you have a thing to be guilty about. I should have brought it up along, but I guess I did. Did you think I was mad at you? I didn't know. I thought maybe I thought maybe it was a faux pas where but it's funny it no. didn't it didn't catch up to me till like 4 years later when I saw that cuz like I said this was new to me and then I saw people doing podcasts and getting really serious and I thought, "Oh fuck." I, I, I just, I'm not a major just, league baseball game. You can reproduce part. I in know, fact, but I never did it after that because I realized, like, oh, maybe that's not what you do. I just thought podcasts were a goofball thing, but then I realized they weren't. But it was too late. I, I, uh, so that's my confession. That couldn't Pete be Holmes. more of a zero for me. <sighs> Meaning, it didn't move the needle at all. So we're still on for Arby's. You have the meats. We have the shit. <laughs> All right, let's do our final segment, Pete Holmes. It's called Words from a Wooden Shoe. Mm -hmm. This is an authentic Dutch clog. Wow. You reach in, Pete, you pull out a word, and see if it triggers a story, a memory from your life, from an associate's life, somewhere on your journey. Don't look at the words. you got to reach in blind and see what you got. Words from a wooden shoe with Pete Holmes. Words from a wooden shoe. What do we got, guy? Stupid kid. Oh, here we go. <laughs> stupid Just kid. Just that face you made said it all, really. <laughs> Were you the stupid what if kid? What <laughs> we find out they all say stupid kid? It's just your no, way of no, haunting no. people? <laughs> That's so funny. I, I have a lot to say about stupid kid, but the, the headliner is... So much of my life, I, and maybe this is a cliche, but I thought I was a less than intelligent person. I had high confidence, but when oh. it came to like book learning, like I thought I was a genius. Don't hear me wrong. Yeah. I thought I was a genius as yeah. a child. Okay. That's good. But. Academically. I got a 1040 on my SATs. That's wow. real bad. So you did homework on Saturdays? What do you mean? You said you got a 1040 on SAT. The standardized aptitude test. Sorry, I thought it meant the weekend. <laughs> you know what? Saturday is actually named after the god Saturn. Isn't that weird? Well, it's actually a planet. The planet's also named after the god Saturn. No. Cracker Barrel's named after a barrel. Filled with white people. <laughs> 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 okay, continue. <laughs> I just, so the comfort that I take in this is I go through high school... By the time I got to college, I went to kind of a, not a dumb, dumb school, but it wasn't a very challenging school. DeVry? It was DeVry. Uh, no, my school is lovely, but it wasn't difficult. Okay. And that was good for me. Because you Malcolm, breezed through it? Malcolm Gladwell makes that point in David and Goliath. He says, there's actually a great argument, don't go to Harvard. You go to Harvard with the cream of the crop, it'll break your confidence. Go to, huh. go to something that's kind of easier for you, dominate. And get that boost. Ah. Did you I, dominate? I wouldn't say I dominated academically, but I was so unworried about my academics that I started doing stand-up, I started doing improv, I started writing mm. for the newspaper, drawing cartoons, all these things that I would end up doing professionally. Oh, wow. Because I 
I never stayed up studying once. Yeah. And I got A's and B's. I was totally wow. fine. Uh, so that was awesome. But the, the, the hopeful note that I would end on Stupid Kid is now, once, it's funny, it's like you're, you're dumb because you don't care about the things you're learning about. And then when you start finding the things that you do care about, you realize like, oh no, I'm smart. I'm just smart about this sort of stuff. Yeah, okay. I'll never be smart about math. I believe it was John Wayne said everybody, I think it's John Wayne, everybody's stupid just in a different subject. Everybody's smart just in a different that's subject. That's right, that's true. So when you start to recognize that there's like social intelligence, emotional intelligence, memorization intelligence, meaning memorizing the quadratic formula and applying it. I'm not saying math is dumb. I'm saying math is teaching us how to learn. So when people are like, I'm not going to need calculus, that's true, but you're learning how to learn. I don't think that was the best for me. Once it came into like language things, psychological things, and then eventually spiritual things, I started reading books, re realizing I have a, a, a very good recall. My brain is a very high processing brain. Huh. I, had a, I had that analyzed. I thought that was interesting. Huh. And then I was like, oh no, I'm very smart. But, but went through all of high school going, in our friend group, I'm the dumb one. <laughs> And I think that's, there's something beautiful. There's a, something kind of butterfly -y about that. Do you think maybe you were sort of playing the dumb guy because you knew secretly inside you were intelligent? I think I was very, very overwhelmed and didn't yet know how to filter through tasks and prioritize them. I'm still not great at that. Huh. So a teacher, let's say a teacher gives you homework and then they also tell you about a big paper. I would sort of give those equal weight. You know what I mean? Interesting. So it was hard for me to go like, you know, it's okay that I did bad on that quiz. I'm, I'm going to rock it with that project at the end of the year. I didn't have that kind of foresight. Okay. I still don't. But it's kind of an ADD thing. If I focus on something and I'm passionate about it, I'll do it faster and better than, you know, almost anybody. If, it's, if I'm trying to do something that I do faster than anybody you know because i'm the one doing it that can you can i just interject because you mentioned the word fast and we'll get back to you but my girlfriend's fasting right now and i don't mean she's like she's, she's eating a lot faster she's she just fat as i mean it's unbelievable the fast she's just stuffing it in <laughs> you truly are she's eating for two you're a gift she's yeah. not pregnant you just She's eating for two. She's just a jumbo. Come to Maya Lago. Do two holes. Eat for two. I ate for two. A table for two. <laughs> God, I love Winston Churchill, you twat. Isn't he great? Yeah. You're a twat. People say that I'm the biggest twat. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying it. Uh, well, buddy. That's my stupid kid. Yeah, you're, you're definitely a very smart, bright kid and watch pete on stage and you'll see it and uh please watch the special can i say here please the, plug away plug the, away buddy the, er, I, i'm not shy about this no do it i got one of those netflix specials yeah. where if you don't watch it they're gonna take it down it's a lease is that right it's a lease and this I'm is not, how they operate i'm not mad about it but when we sold it they're yeah. like we'll buy it for a year and if it doesn't perform they will give it back to me which oh. is which is okay. It's a little embarrassing. Yeah. But, you know, it's also good sales, meaning I'm earnestly saying, please watch it now. Yeah. Or we won't be able to watch it, because if enough people watch it, it'll stay up. Please watch it. Give us the name of it again. I am not for everyone, but if you just search Pete Holmes, it's the only thing. Maybe not the best title when you're trying to get people to watch it the way you are. Disagree. Because you say, no. you read I Am Not For Everyone, you go, I wonder if I'm one of the special people that will like it. Huh? Well, this is coming from a dad who has his child do plays in an earthquake. Again, the details that went through your mind. Like a sieve. Like a spaghetti strainer. Buddy, before we go, yes. can we rub caterpillar and moth together? Or a butterfly and moth? Thanks, friend your gift thanks oh. for coming no 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 take it slow please <laughs> all right you've earned it <laughs> pete holmes go see him do stand-up comedy pete tell them your special i, I can't plug I am it not enough for everyone i am not for everyone on netflix watch it right away everybody 
And uh, do you have any books or anything else? Your, I wrote your a book podcast, Comedy Sex God, and I'm Comedy Pete Holmes on all the platforms and PeteHolmes.com for tour dates. And your podcast, you made it you weird. Made it weird, yeah. And that's on YouTube. It's also on YouTube. Yep, folks, all that Pete's home stuff. Get enjoy it. it. Can Get I hit the theme you. music? Do you like one, two, three? You know what to do. Oh, 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 wow. This is when Harlan wins. I've kind of lost my voice. I feel like well, I Well, could... you do this. Just do what you're going to do. I'm just going to rest my eye as we okay. go out, okay? You've been listening to the Harlan Highway Podcast, brought to you by Squarespace. Also, Athletic Greens. If you want to eat a salad but only have time for some powder, Athletic Greens. Harlan is going to be performing at the 128th Highway in Massachusetts in the oh. middle of the road. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. You rested too hard. Folks, Pete Holmes, you're on the Holland Highway Podcast. Thanks for being here, Pete. I'll see, see you at later, the pups. I'll see you at the cocoon Say center. It. I'll see you later, pups. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Chicken chow mein, baby. <laughs> I didn't think you'd do it. I-